There are three steps we can take to bring about job creation, and we need to take to bring about job creation. We need to achieve energy independence. We need to balance our trade deficit. And we need to rebuild our infrastructure for this century. First, we need to pursue a realistic plan to achieve energy independence. Renewable energy sources will be an important part of the energy mix going forward. But renewable energy is only part of the solution. The reality is that right now and for decades to come, only nuclear power, natural gas, and coal can provide energy on the scale required for our economy and our energy intensive industries. We must recognize the current limitations of other energy sources and new technologies to meet our operational and economic needs. Unrealistic goals will drive up energy prices and decrease reliability, thereby compromising economic stability and growth. By ensuring our energy independence with a mix of resources, we will add a number of jobs in many ways. The construction of new energy infrastructure, the development and provision of energy to consumers, ensuring affordable energy for tomorrow's manufacturing employers, and it will drive research and development into new energy technologies. Second, we need to provide a stable and level playing field for manufacturing in global markets. By doing this, we create the most efficient supply chain, fueling prosperity for the entire world. And that is why Nucor fights so hard for fair, free, but fair trade. And we need to remember that free trade does not mean free for all trade. There are rules, rules that have been agreed to and adopted by the nations of the international trading community. Nucor's position is, and always has been, and always will be, that these rules must be enforced. Globalization is a good thing. It expands our markets, creates new trade relationships, and allows goods and raw materials to flow around the planet. But when governments ignore or deliberately break the rules by which we are trade, by engaging in currency manipulation, employing illegal export subsidies, or intervening in commodity negotiations, then our businesses, your businesses, are forced to compete with entire nations. Our government must hold these parties accountable at the World Trade Organization and in our, and in our own World Trade Organization compliant trade agreements. If we don't, excuse me, <laughs> if we don't, we are going to continue to run massive trade deficits with these nations. And these massive trade deficits are crippling to the American economy. They are destroying American manufacturing, and they are putting Americans out of work. Restoring a balance to trade will give American manufacturing the level playing field it needs to be the job engines of our economy. And having been 34 years in the manufacturing environment, I can guarantee you, given a level playing field, American manufacturing will succeed in global competition. Finally, we need to upgrade our conventional infrastructure. Out of $787 billion, $787 billion in the stimulus package. Only $110 billion was allocated for infrastructure spending. 
up to a third of which is committed to renewable energy, energy which leaves about $70 billion, only $70 billion out of $787 billion for conventional infrastructure. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, we need $2.2 trillion in spending over the next five years to repair and update our roads, our bridges, our dams, our rail service, and air traffic control systems, just to make America's infrastructure safe and to keep us globally competitive. Not only would this effort create jobs through the construction of this infrastructure in the coming years, but it would also provide the American economy with the basic foundation it must have to support manufacturers of the 21st century. We need our government to make creating jobs its number one priority. Number one priority, creating jobs. And we need our government not to be distracted with programs that detract from this effort by adding new deficits or increasing burdensome regulations. By achieving energy independence, restoring American manufacturing through leveling the trade playing field, and building America's 21st century infrastructure, we can create a more secure and prosperous economic future for our nation and for the world. It's up to those of us in this room to make sure that our representatives in the communities, states, nations where we live and work hear this message loud and clear. We have to take the fight to those who would make us compete with one hand tied behind our backs. American manufacturing is the backbone of our economy. We put people to work at good wages, making high quality products that you can count on and that are safe to use. If America's elected leaders take care of their part of the bargain, we in the manufacturing sector will take care of our part of the bargain. The studios dismissed John Wayne's chances to be a major star after his first big budget flop. But he stayed focused on his goal, remained true to himself, and proved that he could come back from being a bit player. Now, once again, you're not hearing this, <clears throat> but what he's being asked in that little clip is, are you going to quit? And he responded, me? Quit? Never. A lot of people seem ready to write off American manufacturing as a relic of the 20th century. They point to green jobs or the knowledge economy as the future. But we're not going anywhere. We always have been and we always will be the key to economic success in America and in the world. And if we stay focused on making sure America understands the critical role manufacturing plays in our economy, we'll ride out of this downturn even stronger and more profitable than we went in. So I'm going to close by saying, let's saddle up, let's get it done, and let's do it together. Thank you.